Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night. Looking forward to a great day. Um, we don't have any birthdays to celebrate today. So if today's your birthday, happy birthday to you. Hope you have a great birthday as you celebrate. The cat shaming photo of the day is I lick my butt and then fart in my face. I wonder how cat does that. I remember the first time Lucy did that. Um, I, cha I changed her cat food, I think. <coughs> and um, she was using the litter box and scared herself when she passed a little gas and turned around and hissed at her bottom. It was, it was really funny. Crazy cat. All right. It is Maundy Thursday. So blessed Triduum to one and all as we enter into these three days um, where we watch and we wait and we wonder and we try to stay awake uh, with our Lord as he goes through the agony of these days. Um, the devotion today is based on Isaiah 61 verse 10 and it says, I will re greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God, for God has clothed me with the garments of salvation, covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. It's difficult for me to wax theologically on wholeness in the moment of blurring disjunction, in a year when even winter procrastinates. But then, it's more difficult to discuss wholeness on a day that remembers the death of the disciples' worlds as they knew it. From aching sleep, they awoke to the voice of the Galilean. It quivered with the same desperation that turned to sweat to blood in Gethsemane. Then he was betrayed, and then he was killed. He broke his body. He shed his blood. So far away from the breaking of bread and the pouring of wine, the washing of feet, and yet so near. Like those freed from the bondage in Isaiah, we leave behind a trail of death's shackles. Perhaps we should imagine the garment of salvation, this robe of righteousness, not as silk or satin gleaming white, but as tough and torn. God is in these broken things. <laughs> Let us pray. God of the fractured, you sent your son to save us. Mend our rifts with the passion to serve our neighbor that we may exult in you with our whole being. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. <laughs> you know, the Israelite people were deeply broken as a result of the exile. Um, scripture says that God allowed this to happen to them because they had wandered so far away from the Lord and from the Lord's ways. And it took breaking them to, to get them to turn and repent. Sometimes it takes that, doesn't it? That we get so focused on, on our ways that we forget the Lord's ways. And then God shows up in a mighty way and breaks us, um, but always puts us back together. God always finds a way for us to come back together again. And I think that's no more evident than what happens to Jesus in these three days. Jesus, who spent his entire ministry putting people back together, um, is ultimately broken. And he's broken for us. His body's broken. He sheds his blood. We remember that profoundly tonight as we celebrate Monday, Thursday. We remember that just 
it's it, more profoundly tonight, I think, than any other night is when we really focus in on that, that this is it. It's a lot to take. I mean, and we're just watching, right? We didn't have to do it. It's a lot for us to watch and wait and wonder and stay awake. Be present in all of this with him. Because it's it's nearly unbearable to watch, much less go through. And yet, God does hear what God does best, which is to bring life out of death. God is all about death and resurrection. God did it with the people of Israel out of the exile, restored them for a time to the glory of, of what, what God wanted them to be, what they wanted them to be. But it didn't last forever. In Jesus, it does last forever. That God restores us through Christ into who and what God is calling us to be. God accepts us for who and what we are, but God never leaves us that way. God continues to mold us and shape us, forming us into the people God's calling us to be. We go through death and resurrection almost daily. We lose something, we let it go. Something new is born in its place. It happens over and over again. But the one that really matters is the one that happens in these three days. So I wish you um, watchfulness and wakefulness. I, I hope you can engage in these days and really ponder what this means and what Jesus did for us so that we never again have to be in exile. We never again have to know what it's like to be distant from God. Jesus took care of that. And we never again have to know what that's like. So, blessed Triduum, as we begin these three days, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And do what you can to bring some love and light into the world. I'll see you back here tomorrow.